and turn our inclination towards anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make shirk with Allah ta'ala. Like that in the institution of nikah, we can see the wisdom behind this concept of tawheed, behind turning solely and completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have looked at the one aspect of it concerning the boy, when he what type of a woman he should look at. We find my respect to this, the ta'aleem of Nabi Akhaim Salaam is also found on both sides. Nabi Akhaim informs the father of that child, he informs the father of that daughter, that إِذَا خَطَبَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَوْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيزٌ O Kama Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That when a proposal is received in your home for your daughter At that time you find that that person is such That you are happy with the akhlaq of that person You are happy with the deen of that person Then Nabi Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructs that father For though we do, get your daughter married to that person Nabi Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say to that father Look at how wealthy that person is Look at how handsome that person is Look at what family that person is coming from The main criterion, the most important thing Is the akhlaq and the deen of that person If you are happy with this, then get your daughter married to that person My respect is Wallah If you only have to think and look at these ahadith of Nabi Akhari Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We will see that the solution to all the problems of this world Lie in the ahadith of Nabi Akhari Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The broken homes, the destitute children The number of divorces that is taking place that, that, that sukoon that is no more found in the home Everything the solution lies in the teaching of Nabi Akhari If only we will forget to ourselves to the rest and bring these things in our life My respect for such peace and such contentment will come Because let us think, when we get in that daughter married She is our daughter, we have brought her up with love and with affection Tomorrow when we look at the world only of that person When we look at that person standing in society And we grant him or we grant our daughter to that person Then we hear he has struck her, we hear he has beaten her We hear that that person is drinking, he is not looking after our daughter Then we are going to cry and then we are going to think that what a great musibah has fallen upon us. My respect brothers, it is only akhlaq, it is only deen that is going to change that fear within that person to look after that woman, to treat her nicely. At the time when he loses his temper, at the time when it is absolutely easy for him to strike her and nobody is going to question him, at that time it is the fear of Allah that is going to stop that person. My respect brothers, we want good for our daughters, but we go about it completely wrong. We go about it in completely the other direction. That is why Nabi Apart Salaam says, if you are happy with the deen and the akhlaq of that person, for so those we do who get your daughter married to that person, why? إلا تفعلوه تكون فتنة في الأرض وفساد عريض. If you do not do this, if you do not make deen and apply the criterion for the acceptance of the proposal, then there will be fitna and fasad upon the face of the earth. The be a part of my respect, brothers. What you have said is absolute hak and it is absolute truth. And we can look around us and we can look at the condition that is found amongst us. We have left the teaching that the be a part of them. That is why there is this problem. Look. Uh, just one incident we mentioned in the life of the Sahaba, but it's like there are so many, the life of the Sahaba are repeat with examples, with guidelines for us, if we can only bring these things into our life. Look at the case of Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. On one occasion, Yazid bin Muawiyah, the son of Muawiyah, who was a ruler at that time, and he was a person that was very, very wealthy, he sent a proposal to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu for his daughter, Darda. And we find that at that time, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu considered the proposal and he turned it down. When the news was received that Abu Darda radiallahu anhu had turned, now you remember, Yazid bin Muawiyah was a prominent person, he was a ruler at that time, and this proposal had been turned down which had come for his daughter. Look at our condition and think to ourselves, if some ruler, some wealthy person has to extend a proposal for our daughter, we won't look left, we won't look right, straight away we will only give our daughter in that family. Because my respect this, unfortunately, we have given importance to these things. Status, Standing in society, etc., these things have become important to us. You find that when the rejection of the proposal, the news was received, then there was a person who used to work for, 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 for Yazid, a lowly person in his court. He told Yazid that, Give me permission, may Allah Ta'ala find you a good wife, give me permission to also propose to the same woman. At first he turned him down. When he asked him again, he told him, Okay, you can propose to that woman. Now you find my respect is that here is an ordinary worker, he is a person who has a low standing in society. He sends a proposal to Abu Darda Rilano, and as Abu Darda Rilano gets him daughter to, married to his daughter. Now we find that as it's common in society, the people begin to talk that he turned down the proposal of the ruler and he gave his daughter to a lowly person like this. So somebody came to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu and he questioned him that why was this your reaction? Why did you react like this? My respect is here in this reply, we have to learn our lesson and think for ourselves what has become of our priorities. He said that Nabardu ila Darda, I looked towards my daughter Darda and he said Ma vannukum bi Darda, ida qamat ala ra'siya khasyan. That what do you think 
what you think will be the condition of my daughter Darda when after getting married to such a rich person, staring at her head will be eunuchs, will be slaves that will attend to her every whim and her every desire. One other at Ila Baitin and she will look towards such a house wherein the ornaments and everything is so beautiful and so many of the things of this world is that you tell me O Siha Basaruha that her eyes will begin to shine and she will be taken in by the gleam and the glamour of all that is found and that is presented before her. Abu Abu Dara said that Aina Jinuha Minha Yoma Izin that what will happen to the deen of my daughter at that day if this is going to be her condition. My respect brothers, he understood the threat that this dunya and the things that of this dunya will pose to the deen of his daughter and that was the criterion why he turned down the proposal. To us my respect brothers, the way our minds have become conditioned, we will think in completely the opposite way. We find my respect brothers, we have to learn from these things and bring these things into our life. And we find that once a person has found a person has found the type of woman he is looking for, he has looked at the piety of that woman and he has sent the proposal. Then my respect does we find that that boy should before sending the proposal, he should perform istikhara namaz, he should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should make mashwara with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Find out whether there is khair, whether there is good for you in getting married to that woman. If he receives an indication from Allah Ta'ala and he finds his heart leaning towards that woman, then he should send that proposal. My respected brothers, we find that here again, if you look at the guidance, guidelines shown to us when we are from the he said that إِذَا خَطَبَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَىٰ إِمْرَاتٍ If one of you has to send a proposal to a woman, فَإِنِ اسْتَطَاعَ يَنْظُرَ إِلَىٰ مَا يَدْعُوهُ إِلَىٰ نِكَاحِهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ If he has the ability that he glances at the woman to whom he has sent the proposal, whom he wants to bring into his nikah, then he should do so. My respect brothers, look at the talim of Nabi Pasallahu He said, one glance at that woman, that we go to the house, gain the permission of the parents, and in front of a mahram, we take one glance at that woman, then we come back, our trust is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make istikhara, seek mashura from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the firm yaqeen that the success of the marriage is only in the hands of Allah ta'ala, and I am doing it for the sake of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the one talim of Nabi Pasallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the other talim, the type of food that has come into our home, the type of food that has come into our mind that it is necessary in order for us to know that the marriage is going to be successful that I should send my daughter out with that boy that he should come and he should speak to her how am I going to know if they are going to live with each other how am I going to know if they are compatible all these strange sorts of terms that have been said to us by the rest that create a license for us to send that boy and that girl out long before the marriage because now you suppose they are engaged let them go out they are going here they are going there long before the marriage the things that are supposed to take place after the marriage have already been done and at that time he's no more interested in the daughter. At that time shame comes upon the society. At that time they break the proposal. The one family is not talking to another family. My respect to that is the situation of the rest and that is what we have brought into our home. Nabi Ayyad gave the Sahaba the ta'aleem of one grand towards that woman because that woman is a haram upon him. After he has proposed to her till he gets married as any other woman, she is haram. And Nabi Apostle Allah has cursed that deaf person and looks towards that woman and the one towards whom the game is, da- is directed. That is a woman that is haram upon a person. So we learn from this, my respect, that that is all that is necessary. One glance at that woman. Thereafter, should the girl's party feel that they want to get, married, to get the daughter married to that person, then automatically, then, then, if you find that they accept the proposal, then there is no need for another engagement after that. There is no need to gather all the people together, intermingling of, of men and women, all sorts of wrong things taking place, dances now taking place, music now being played, all sorts of things that we have learned from the West, all sorts of things that we have learned from the Hindus around us, from the Christians around us, and we have brought these things into our life. My respect is that it could never have been gotten from the Sahaba of Nabiya These things were not found in their life. So where else could we have got it besides from the Nasara, besides from the Yahud? We find that unnecessary expenses is incurred in an engagement taking place. Thereafter a long period is taken. We wait for a long time before we actually get the, the two of them married. At that time they are both inclined to a sin and they break the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find Nabi Abbas and says that there are three things that should never be delayed. And one of those things is the marriage of a salient, of a, of a, of a woman who is not married once her partner has been found. It should not be delayed. It is not necessary to wait for the uncle from India to come. It is not necessary to wait for my brother Morana from another province to come, it is not necessary in the brother is writing an exam in his university, he's going to come in a few months' time. What, why are we creating all these delays? Why are we making it so difficult 
such a simple and sweet sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he sees one of his sahaba, one from the Asura and Mubashara, Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu, and he noticed some sufra, something like saffron on his clothes, which was not permissible for men. So he asked him that what is this 